In this lesson, we're going to be discussing section 1.1 of the McCloskey book, titled Scarcity and the Budget Line. And we're only going to be covering about half of it, and the next half we'll cover in the next lesson. But all we're going to be talking about today are three fundamental economic concepts. And these three concepts right here are going to come back again and again, so it's really important to get them down right now. Now, the first concept is scarcity. The second one is fungibility. And third is opportunity cost. So as we proceed in these lessons, you're going to get more and more of an intuition of how these things are related and why they are so important to economics. Now, we'll start by talking about the first one, scarcity. We say a thing is scarce if it is both desirable and limited. So pause the video now and think about these four everyday things right here. I mean, we're all encountering radioactive waste every single day. So let's think about whether these four things are both desirable and limited, and then answer the question of whether they are scarce. So if this is the first time you are watching this video, pause now and try to answer this question. Which of these things is scarce? Okay. So hopefully you've had a chance now to think about these four things. Let's start with apples. Are apples desirable? Yes, I'd say so. Are apples limited? Yes, we cannot have infinite numbers of apples, so they are desirable and limited, so apples are scarce. Now let's think about air. Is air desirable? Well, we need air to breathe, don't we? So air is definitely desirable. But is air limited? No, you can have as much air as you want. So air is not scarce. Now let's think about radioactive waste. Is radioactive waste desirable? I sure hope you say not, so I'm going to put an X over there. And is radioactive waste limited? Well, it is very difficult to produce, and we can't produce an infinite amount of it, so I would say it's limited. However, because it is not desirable, it is not scarce. Now let's consider, finally, garbage. Is garbage desirable? Definitely not. Is garbage limited? Nope, you can have as much garbage as you want. So, of these four things, we've decided that the only one which is scarce is apples. Now we can also see scarcity on an axis. So here we have numbers of books on this axis. Mm -hmm. And over here, we have a limit to how many books we can have. We are limited by how many books we can have by the amount of money that we have. So we can purchase up to 20 books. We cannot have anything more than 20 more books, but we can have anything less than 20 books. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that there's an implicit assumption that we're making in drawing this axis in the first place. That assumption is that these books are completely exchangeable, that the books are identical in their units. Now, in general, in the real world, it's quite clear that each book is different. Not every book is the same. However, often in economics, we're going to draw these simple graphs with books on an axis, and you can take it to mean one of two things. The first way you can consider it is that books are close enough to each other that we can put them on one axis and they're practically identical. The other way in which you can take it is that we're in this hypothetical world in which books are a single object and they're completely identical. So you can either take it as being the real world and making an additional assumption about the books that they are close enough to each other or you can imagine that we're in a hypothetical world and in this world they are the same. When a good's units are exchangeable like books in this axis we say that a good is fungible. So let's think about some things that we encounter every day and decide whether these things are fungible. Well, really, you're not going to be encountering gold and diamonds every day, but hopefully you encounter cash every day. So let's stop now, and I want you to think about whether these things are fungible.
All right, let's start first with cash. Is cash fungible? Yes, you can easily exchange a $10 bill for another $10 bill or for two $5 bills. Doesn't matter. You don't really have a preference. Cash is fungible. How about gold? Yes, sure. All you really care about is the weight of the gold. So as long as you're getting the same amount of gold back, it doesn't really matter in what form it is. So gold is essentially fungible. How about diamonds? Can you simply weigh diamonds on a scale and if someone's giving you the same amount of diamonds in return, would you exchange it automatically? No, of course not. What's important about diamonds is the quality of the diamond and the cut and the shape and the color and these things are all important. So we cannot say that diamonds are fungible. Finally, let's get to opportunity cost, our third economic concept. Now, the opportunity cost of a certain choice is simply the next best thing that you could have done. So we define opportunity cost as the next best thing. So let's come up with this imaginary example. Suppose I have three needs. Okay, my first need is to drink water. Second need is to shower. And my third need is to wash my car. And these are ranked in order. So the highest need I have is water. It's to drink water. Second is to shower. And third is to wash my car. I am given one unit of water. So then I will use my water on drinking and the opportunity cost of this choice to drink, use my water, my unit of water to drink is to shower. So this is the opportunity cost. Now, let's consider a question from the McCloskey book, Related Opportunity Cost, which really gets to the root of what opportunity cost is. So, true or false, the cost to a student of a year of college is the cost of books, tuition, room, and board. So pause here and think for a little while about what the answer is. Well, this answer actually turns out to be false. The reason for this is that when we're considering the cost of something, you don't merely consider the amount of money you have to pay for this thing. You're also considering, in addition to the cost of books, tuition, room, and board, the next best option that you had to going to college. So what does a student sacrifice in going to college? They sacrifice the highest wage that they could have gotten instead of going to college. So if that happened to be $10,000 and the cost of books, tuition, room and board was $30,000, the opportunity cost would be $40,000 because the opportunity cost includes both the cost of books, mm -hmm. tuition, room and board and the cost of not having your next best option. All right, well, that's everything for this week. And your assignment for this week is to read pages six through eight, answer exercises one through five. And when you're reading pages six through eight, make sure to skip the scarcity and two dimension section. Now, also, whenever you encounter any mm -hmm. question in this reading, six through eight, I want you to make sure that you don't look at the answer immediately, and you try to answer the question yourself. And then when you're finally satisfied with your answer, look at the text explanation and compare it to the answer that you had thought yourself. You will learn much better by doing it this way, and it'll make it easier for you when we start next time's lesson. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Do the assignment, and we'll start again with the next lesson next week.